In this tutorial, we will learn how to implement a proximity sensor in Blender using geometry nodes. Here we can see that the bars are responding whenever the red ball is coming close to them. In another example, we can see a similar application, but here the bars are going down when the ball is near the surface. You can use this property to create very interesting things. We will learn how to do this, so let us start with a blank new file. We'll delete this default cube and instead add a plane. Then open this operator box and we can change the size to say 10. We also need a guiding object here. So let us add a UV sphere and we can reduce its radius to 0.7. Now close this box and let us move the sphere and keep it somewhere aside. We will place a group of cubes on this plane and then we'll implement the proximity factor. So let us open a geometry node editor. Then hide this side panel and click on the new button. So we'll get these two default nodes. Let's first disconnect this. Then we'll connect it to a node called subdivide mesh. We can increase the subdivision level to 5. Then we will connect this to a mesh two points node. And it should go to the output geometry. So we get these points distributed on the vertices of the source plane. Now we will place one cube at each of these points and they will be tightly packed. So go to the add menu, then go to mesh primitive and let's add a cube mesh. By default, its size will be too big for us, so let us reduce it, maybe to 0.25. Then, let us move it out a little bit. And in between these two nodes, we need to add another node, called instance on points. Its output should go to the final output. And the cube primitive node should go to this instance socket. So this is the result, we can see an instance of the cube on each of the points that we distributed on the source plane. Let us pin this node so that it remains displayed, even if we change our selection in the viewport. Now, we want these cubes to change their color, whenever the sphere comes close to them. So we need a way to measure its distance, or sense its proximity. But before that, we need to realize these instances, through a Realize Instances node. Connect it to the final geometry. Then go to the Add menu, go to Geometry, and add a Geometry Proximity node. This is our most important node, and in its target field, we need to attach that object, whose distance we want to measure or track. So let us connect a node called, Object Info node, for the target socket. And here we need to select the sphere. Then switch over to the relative option. In the proximity node, we have selected faces, but you can change this to points, or edges, for a variation in the effect. We need to then store this distance as an attribute of the source object or the cubes. So let us go to the Add menu and add a store named Attribute Node. Its geometry sockets should be connected on two sides. Then in this value field, we must connect the proximity distance. And in this name field, you need to type a name, any name that you may like. We can access this value through this attribute name from any other place like in a shader editor. But we need to first add a material for this. So turn on the material view mode, and then go to the materials tab. Let's create a new material, and we can change its name, to material1. This same material must be assigned to these instances. So let us bring a set material node from the add menu. And we need to select our material1 here. This is important, because whenever we add a new material here, it gets assigned to the base object, or the original plane. But these cubes are instances of this separate mesh primitive, so we need to assign a material explicitly, using a set material node. Then the rest of the process needs to be done in a shader editor. By default, Blender has added a principled BSDF and a material output node. We will disconnect them, and here, let us connect it to a mixed shader. We need to connect a different color for its second input, so let us duplicate this node, and connect it to the mixed shader, which should then go to the material output. We will change this base color to some other color. So currently we are getting a mixture of these two input colors, which is controlled by this FAC value, but instead of this FAC, we want to control the mix factor by the distance from this target object. So here, we need to bring the proximity distance, which we have stored in the attribute. And we have to type that exact same name in this attribute name field, which we have used in the geometry nodes. Then just connect its FAC output to this mix factor. So as a result, we'll discover that if we now bring the target object near the surface of these cubes, 
they will show a magical change in their material and the color. We can make it even brighter by controlling the fall off with the help of a color ramp node right here. So from the add menu under converter, we'll add a color ramp node and place it after the attribute node. Let us then add couple of more handles to create a suitable fall off. And for each handle, we can customize the color and the location to control how the color change should happen. This is just as usual for any color ramp node you may already know. So now, we can see that the color change is more prominent for the cubes. This is how we can apply the proximity factor and create a mechanism to sense proximity of any object. Next, we will learn how to influence the cubes to grow in their height when the target object is at a near distance. We need to do that through the geometry nodes, so let us go back there and zoom into our node setup. We have to connect this geometry proximity to the scale factors of the instance on points node. But before that, we need to move the origins of these cubes. The origin should stay at the bottom end or the bottom surface so that any scale change can happen only in the positive z-axis. So we need to place a transform node for this cube mesh. We have discussed this method in one of our previous tutorials on how to move the origin point through geometry nodes. We need to connect a node here called attribute statistic node. And then, for this attribute input, we need to connect a position node, like this. Now, for this minimum value, we have to connect a vector scale node. Let's change the scale factor to minus 1. Then connect this vector to the transform node. So we are done with this part, let us minimize these nodes and create some space. Then, let us select the Geometry Proximity node, together with the Object Info node. We'll bring them on this side of the node group. And we need to connect this distance value to these scale factors, with the help of a combined XYZ node. This is used when we need a vector data from individual components. Here, the X and Y components of the scale will be simply 1. And this distance value should go to the Z component. But the absolute value of the distance may not be suitable, we need to transform it into a suitable range with a map range node. Let us connect the result to this z-value. We will amplify and reverse the distance value here. The minimum and the maximum input range is 0 to 1, and here we will reverse it. So this minimum value can be 5, and this maximum can be 0. Now we can see the result here. As we move the ball using the grab tool, the cubes are growing up, just when we bring the ball near the surface of the cubes. And like before, for a better result, we can fine-tune the falloff, we need to use a color ramp node between these two. So let us create some space by moving these nodes. Now we'll add a color ramp node from the add menu. This is just an example, so we won't invest much time, the point is, you can customize it as per your requirement through a color ramp and a map range node and we need to enable this clamp option for the map range. This time, the difference in the output is subtle or very minor. You'll notice it only when you play with it and experiment with several settings for the map range and the color ramp nodes. Now, instead of the elevation, we can also create a depression or a decline for the cubes based on the same proximity factor. For that, we need to exchange these two values. So it will be from zero to say five. And we can also increase this max input value to 3, just for an example. So now, the cubes have an initial height. But as soon as we bring our sphere near the surface of the cubes, they will recede or reduce their height. Beautiful! You can use this technique in various ways, the possibilities are unlimited. Since we have stored the proximity in an attribute field, and it updates itself dynamically, it perfectly works as a proximity sensor. You can access it from any other place within Blender and implement any kind of magical feature very easily. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.